untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green fight rigging deck, which also features Obosh, the Prey Piercer, as its companion. So this is a 5 mana, 3-5, and we can easily cast it in a black-green deck, so don't need red mana for it. Says our starting deck contains only cards with odd mana values and land cards. And as you can see, our deck has a lot of 1-drops, 3-drops, couple 5s, and then at 7 and 9 mana we've got a couple cards as well. So we can play Obosh as our companion, and then we get a 3 5 saying if a source we control with an odd mana value would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. So this can be a very powerful late game effect to have access to, especially combined with our trampling creatures like Elder Gargroth, which is also a great card to ramp into early thanks to our 8 mana elves. Then it's also a 6-6, six, six, so it only requires a 1 plus 1 counter to enable fight rigging, which is the 3 mana hideaway enchantment, saying at the beginning of combat put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control, and then if you control a creature with power 7 or greater, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost, and we get to take a look at the top 5 cards of our library to exile one of them face down when we play fight rigging, so we can potentially hit something expensive like a great henge that we can cast for free, there's titan of industry which we can also cheat into play as early as turn 3 in this deck, a 7-7 seven, seven with reach and trample, so perfect at blocking an early parhelion for instance from the grease fang deck, can also destroy an artifact or enchantment, gain 5 life, make a rhino token or put a shield counter somewhere and then we're also playing with turn timber symbiosis which can be played as an untapped land at the cost of three life but it's also a seven mana sorcery letting us look at the top seven cards of our library to put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield and if the mana value was three or less it also gets three additional plus one plus one counters on it so symbiosis is just kind of a freebie to include in a deck with fight rigging since that increases the density of high value cards we can potentially cast for free and we've got a couple nice three drops to potentially find with it, including Rotting Regisaur, which we can cast on turn 2 thanks to our many elves, a 7-6, but it has the downside of having to discard a card at the beginning of our upkeep, and then we also have 4 copies of Shakedown Heavy, a 6-4 with Menace, also comes with a strange drawback, if it attacks, the defending player may have us draw a card, if they do, untap Shakedown Heavy and remove it from combat. So all these creatures are very important to set up an early fight rigging, so if we go turn 1 elf, turn 2 play one of these creatures, then turn three we can play fight rigging and already enable hideaway thanks to our high powered creatures and cast all those cards for free and then Elder Gergroth kind of bridges the gap as something we can ramp into with our elves but it's also a pretty nice hit to find with fight rigging and as a reach creature also perfect for blocking an early parhelion against the grease fang deck can gain life draw extra cards or make beast tokens whenever it attacks or blocks and with vigilance we can play offense and defense and then our interaction also comes in the form of Thoughtseize at one mana, of course, a nice interactive discard spell, and Fatal Push. Don't have the best way to enable Revolt in this deck for Fatal Push, so that's a bit of a drawback, but still happy to have a cheap removal spell that we can cast early on while we're setting up. And then our late game also consists of drawing extra cards of Great Henge, so we can play this pretty early on thanks to the discount from Regisaur and Shakedown Heavy. So in the case of Regisaur, can cast it for just double green. In case of Shakedown Heavy, it's three mana to get the Henge down, and then it will make up its mana right away by tapping for double green, gaining two life, and then our future creatures will draw a card and enter with an extra plus one plus one counter. So now if we find additional one mana elves late in the game, they still replace themselves, which is quite nice. And then we can also use the mana from Henge to maybe ramp into some of our more expensive spells, maybe put Obosh in hand and cast it in the same turn. So Henge and Fight Rigging give us two separate game plans that both synergize with Shakedown Heavy and Regisaur. So the deck all functions quite nicely together. And then the mana base just has a ton of black green dual lands. Since we have a relatively low land count as well, since we're including all these one mana elves, we don't want to flood out. And then of course Symbiosis counts as an extra land as well. The channel lands for added interaction. No room for creature lands, just keeping it simple here. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and this is kind of the dream start. Elves into Regisaur plus Fight Rigging. And even a Fatal Push for interaction. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Also Black Green. Turn 1 Supplier, so a Grease Fang deck. So pretty important that we find an Elder Gargroth with our Fight Rigging. For now I think I prefer Regisaur, since that also maybe enables a Great Henge. 
and can start attacking right away. Discard a Titan of Industry, most likely. Opponent setting up what looks like a Grizzly Salvage. Okay, fight rigging. And hope to find something juicy. And a Symbiosis. Can also find a Gergroth. Could have also gone for counter on Lenor Elves. And there's Gergroth. So we'll attack. Even if they set up a turn 3 Parhelion, we'll have a Gergroth to block, and our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a turn 2 Regisaur without Fight Rigging or Great Henge to go with it. But we can still try and ramp out an early Obosh with all these Elves. So I'm down to try it. And let's just take 3. Opponent on the red deck. Does the elf survive? It does. So an early Regisaur is a good blocker against red. So I think I prefer it over double elf, or I guess even triple elf now. Would also be painful in case of a future chain whirler. But uh, we'll give this a try. And then if we top deck Henge or fight rigging, we can go for it. Just a Kumano. So no good attacks for them. And they can take out our Mystic. That's fine. Alright, Shakedown Heavy seems like the play now. So we're kind of giving up on Obosh now by not playing our Elves. But I think that's fine. Can just try to outrace them with all these giants. Potent incentivized to play a creature now. Not sure if I block champion if they attack, because they could finish off heavy with a lightning strike. So I'll take one. Although this could enable spectacle for the opponent, which is the downside. Just a scorch spitter. So the fact that they have all these particular one drops makes me think they're a cavalcade deck as opposed to your typical mono red. So. I can put a bush in hand, play a tap land, and next turn maybe be able to cast it, but can also attack first and see if we maybe get to draw off Shakedown Heavy. Since this is presenting lethal, so opponent either has to chump or let us draw. And we drew Gergroth. So now what's the move? Maybe just put a bush in hand, play a tapped Blooming Marsh, or I can play Elf, have to discard Gergroth, but then we won't be able to cast a bush yet. So hoping to draw a land is probably better. Could also discard a 5 drop and then keep Mystic to next turn guarantee enough mana. Okay, Annex can maybe trade. So what's our decision here? Yeah, maybe I should play it safe, just discard a Bosch. Since we don't have any Tramplers in play yet, which is when a Bosch is at its best. And our point at 6 means both our creatures are already lethal, so it's not like the extra damage matters as much. Henge is nice, so we can play that. Still play a Mystic. And probably discard whatever we draw into here. Unless it's a fight rigging, in which case I'm happy to go for it. And find another fight rigging. Or Thoughtseize. Can maybe take an Ember Cleave. Yeah, that's probably better. Counter on Shakedown. And see what they're working with. There's a number cleave. Opponent still has a couple burn spells in hand, so we have to be careful. But both of these are lethal. So they may let us draw and then chump Regisaur. And that leaves us in a pretty decent spot, I would say. Opponent sets up a double block. So those trade. Okay. Opponent gets a couple tokens. And I think I hang on to Symbiosis, even though we don't have to discard anymore in case we want to cast it. So opponent can double burn Shakedown Heavy. And yeah, that would leave them in a decent spot with Castle also being able to pump the Seder tokens. But uh, Gargroth is probably going to be a little too much for them to handle. 
So play Gergroth. And no point in thought seizing since her opponent's empty handed. So I'll play this out. Count her on. Gargroth seems large enough, so I'll put it on the Mystic and hang back for now. And then we can cast Symbiosis. Finding another Gergroth. Back up Henge. Okay, I'll let us uh, attack. And then I'm okay sending in both. Do I make a beast? Do I draw? Let's just make a beast. We have enough card draw from Henge. Double block plus burn spell, I guess, does it, which could have been a reason to thought cease just to have a look. But uh, yeah, I don't think we're losing this game. So Gargroth down, presumably. There's a play with fire. Bone falls to three, and uh, that's three lethal creatures ready to attack. But uh, props to our opponent for not giving up. On to the next one. We're on the draw, and I think we've got a keeper. Mystic into Shakedown Heavy sets up a cheap Great Henge. And uh, they can keep a Vault Sleeper for a turn. Is their opponent Mono Black? Thoughtsies probably takes either Henge or Shakedown Heavy. Heavy's gone. And another Sleeper. Take one. And we can return the favor. And Shieldred and Karn are both problematic. Which one do we take? It's going to be two more turns before they can cast it. Karn will be able to get Graveyard Hate we don't really care about. So most likely goes for something like a Sky Sovereign, which can take out our creatures. Or some other Curve Topper if they get enough Devotion going, maybe. So I think Shieldred is probably the scarier card for now. And then we can wait to Fatal Push until our opponent levels up Sleeper. Next turn put Obosh in hand at the very least, so it's still important to keep our Elvish Mystic. And then we'll kill the 3-3. Three, three. Karn does shut down Great Henge, which can be a bit of a downside, although it still draws extra cards. Opponent gets a Cityscape Leveler, so that's a long-term project. And Elder Gergroth seems awesome here. Next turn with a Bosch. Can easily take out Karn. And I don't know if our opponent will have any answers to search up at 5 mana. So maybe a Death Touch on uh, Evolved Sleeper to trade as their best bet. As our opponent gets a portal to Phyrexia. So we can play Henge, although I won't be able to play a Bosch afterwards because of Karn. But yeah, we can play Henge and then attack Karn. Probably drawing a card in the process. And then still play a Bosch. I think I prefer drawing over making a beast. Farewell, and, thank you for the and then next turn Titan of Industry. Gonna be pretty powerful as well. Ayara. Not a huge problem. 
backup henge. So how much mana are we working with? Can still play an elves first if we'd like. And then play Titan. Can make a Rhino token and put a shield counter on a Bosch, I think. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is missing a Mana Elf, as well as a Fight Rigging or a Great Henge to really combo off. So we're kind of relying on the early interaction to then maybe draw a couple extra cards with Shakedown Heavy to bridge the gap. Not the most reliable plan. Opponent with Gigantha's Companion, which could be a heroic strategy, in which case these are very efficient interactive spells to maybe strand the opponent without any creatures. So maybe I'll try it. It's going to be a red-green with turn one elves instead. All right, let's just push the elves and next turn Thoughtseize. Third land is good. Uh -huh, I see. Collected Company, Grinning Ignus combo deck. So, yeah, having the Ignus in hand is scary. Risen Reef can provide a ton of value. Opponent uh, trying to infinitely combo off with Ignus. Taking Company, of course, also makes sense, but yeah, the opponent's hand is stacked. So what if I just take Risen Reef to deny the extra value, make it harder for them to hit their land drops, perhaps? Since they have double company. And then, gotta apply some early pressure with the Shakedown Heavy. And they may not want to expose Grinning Ignis to removal, so our opponent hangs on to their Ignis for now. Okay, we can play Regisaur instead of a Shakedown Heavy to be guaranteed extra damage. Which may be the way to go, even though Heavy doesn't force me to discard and our opponent's likely to at least take 6 early on. And then next turn I could see playing Regisaur over a second Heavy. So our opponent can likely play a Collected Company here. Nope, it's going to be a Burgi first. Henge is nice. So hit for 6. So I'm likely dead to the combo in 2 turns. Unless our opponent has a finisher in hand, in which case we could already die next turn. So play Henge, and then still play Regisaur afterwards. And draw a card. And hope to find a Fight Rigging. So if they cast Ignis, Burgi makes red mana, they can use the red mana to activate Ignis. And that's basically an infinite loop but they still need an actual win condition to make any progress. Just a tapped canal, so no company here. And a runaway Steamkin. So that alongside Ignus can actually start netting mana. So very well could be dead next turn. For now, we have 6 mana, so we can go double heavy or Gargroth, and then maybe still pick up something we can cast. The heavy is a bit problematic here since it doesn't actually damage the opponent. So step 1 will attack. Now our opponent is forced to either let us draw with heavy or chum block. And we draw another Gargroth. Would love to hit a Thought Seize here. Of our Great Henge. But still, if I go with Shakedown Heavy, I would need to draw Land plus Thoughtseize if I play Second Heavy for that to work. So probably just go for Gargroth. And Land is nice. So next turn I can put Obosh in hand and potentially cast it with an extra Land, which could give our Gargroth double the damage output. So that's likely game over, but uh, yeah, we'll see if this company kills us instead. They need Grinning Ignis plus a win condition. A Risen Reef plus Innkeeper, so they get a treasure. But they don't have the mana to play Ignis right now. Unless they drew an untapped land here in the process. Because then they can play Ignis, keep comboing, and now gain infinite life with Innkeeper. My opponent played Stomping Ground tapped. That's surprising. 
So do they not see the line? Discard Shakedown Heavy. And Alliance, so I think it's time for a Bosch. And Smash. And Gargroth can draw, I guess. So this is essentially 14 damage, so I don't think our opponent has enough to survive. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they could have won last turn had they just played Stomping Ground untapped, played Grinning Ignis, get a red mana from Burgi, activate Ignis, and they can keep looping it with Innkeeper. Now gaining one life per iteration and Risen Reef triggering as well, putting extra stuff in play. And then at some point they can stop playing Ignis if they don't want to end up decking. And our opponent explodes, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Double Elves to ramp into a Regisaur, setting up an early Great Henge. Well, let's see what we're up against. Black Green with Supplier, so a Grease Fang deck. And there's Parhelion waiting for us. But Elder Gergroth is one of the better tools to potentially still beat a Parhelion. So, yeah, I think we go for Regisaur. Discounts Henge the most. And then next turn we can play Henge plus Shakedown Heavy. Discarding Lanor Elves. So, play Henge. Play Heavy. And Titan, let's see, four, five, six. Yeah, probably not too close to casting yet, so happy playing this tapped and then discarding Titan. And Regisaur attacks into Supplier is fine. They'll be able to chump it at some point. Alright, Grease Fang in the graveyard, so if they have a can't stay away, they can bring back Grease Fang, but they had one in hand. So, there's Parhelion, hits us for 13, and now it's Gergroth's job to keep up, basically. So, a 3, 4, 5, 6. If I draw an untapped lands, I could technically cast Titan, but not gonna count on it. And a backup henge, that's plus 2 life, essentially, which may be worth it. So, step 1 is still to attack. Opponent takes 14. And play Gargroth. Can play a land since we're about to discard it to Regisaur anyway. Okay, hope our 7-7 seven, seven can keep us alive. Can block Parhelion, gaining life in the process. But if they can bring back a second Parhelion, it may still be too much. And then we're a land away from putting a Bosch in hand and casting it, which is quite good on this board. Ooh, a go for the throat. Don't see that one in uh, Parhelion decks very often, but incredibly effective now. So we have to chump a Grease Fang, take 8 down to 2. It's a good thing we had a backup henge. But now we're in serious trouble. Go for the throat out of nowhere. Gonna make the difference. So let's smash. Since yeah, Bush is not gonna work here. Both my creatures are lethal, so I guess they do have to double chump or at least let me draw with Shakedown Heavy and Fatal Push answers one of the angels. Double blocks. Get to kill both angels. Although we'd still be in trouble against another uh, discarded Parhelion. So I cannot cast Symbiosis, but I can put Obosh in hand. Up to four, and then discard Symbiosis to Regisaur next turn to cast Obosh if we'd like. And hope they don't have a discard outlet. 
So incredibly close game here against Greasefang. So they may be trying their luck here to mill over another Parhelion. Or if they have another go for the throat, I guess they win as well. Uh, Witherbloom commands to mill themselves, and wow, they actually hit another Parhelion. Well, not much we can do about that one. So Greasefang bring back Parhelion, and now we're dead. Yeah, could not have been any closer. Came down to the last couple milled cards. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems promising. Elvish Mystic into turn 2 heavy, sets up Great Henge. Ramps into Gergroth. And we also have a bit of interaction with Thoughtseize. Although I'm not sure when I'm gonna cast it, since we want to go for a turn 1 Mystic. Well, let's see what we're facing. Blue whites, so if it's control, that's bad news, but I think we still play the heavy. And then next turn we can henge and still play in elves afterwards. So Hall of the Storm Giants definitely points towards a more traditional control deck. And could definitely thought seize to make sure they don't have a Dovin's Veto or maybe even a sensor to counter henge. Shakedown Heavy can maybe start by attacking. And then I think I fire off a couple thought seizes. So let's see what they're working with. And our opponent had multiple two mana counters. Sensor make disappear and a supreme verdict as well, which is going to be pretty rough for us to face. So yeah, probably have to take verdict, cast another thought seize which they can make disappear. And then I can cast an Elf. Gonna struggle to resolve a Great Henge. But at least we're beating down with our Shakedown Heavy in the meantime. So do I want a Thought Seize now is a question. I make them use their mana if I do. Although they might want to make disappear the Lenor Elves. In which case I can keep Thought Seize for Absorb. Sure. Let's try this. Alright, they let the Elves slide. So now we'll pass, they might cycle sensor. So if I seize next turn, I can take absorb and then try and play around make disappear on the following turn. But they'll probably have picked up some relevant interaction in the meantime. A rotting Regisaur. Okay, that's worth playing. I think I tap my elves, since if they did pick up a Supreme Verdict and let it resolve. Then we would like to Thought Seize, but then they would just counter the Thought Seize. So does it mean I just Thought Seize now anyways? I guess so. They'll probably let it resolve if they don't have a Supreme Verdict. If they do have a Supreme Verdict, they counter, but then I at least resolve Henge. So our opponent's gonna absorb. Alright, so now I think we play Henge to make sure that's in play. And attack. And then, end of turn, we can make sure to gain two life. So now Verdict is less backbreaking, since we can at least leverage our Henge. So yeah, Thoughtseize is proving to be incredibly important in this matchup. Would not like to draw a Fatal Push in this instance, so we got kind of lucky in that regard. So do I just cast a Regisaur here, see what the response is? While well, we can pay for Make Disappear, and then maybe just send in the Elves. Could also put a wash in hand instead. Okay, a land is useful. So let us attack. And I think I keep one elf untapped. To put a wash in hand. Find symbiosis. So we could very well see a supreme verdict next turn. But then we get to follow up with a Gergroth. Opponent cycles farmland. And it's going to be a Teferi instead. So they seem that on board unless they minus on Regisaur. So that's what they'll do here. And then we can take out Teferi while still drawing extra cards and applying pressure. So yeah, we definitely had a pretty great draw for this type of matchup. So if I play Obosh, we double the damage from our Elves as well. Can certainly still take out Teferi. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Mystic into Shakedown Heavy sets up early Great Henge, but we'll see if our opponent has the interaction they need. Opponent also black green, fatal push can always be useful. And a Wayfinder, so up against a Grease Fang deck most likely. They milled to Grease Fang. No vehicle at least. And time for Shakedown Heavy. And then we even have Boseju, which could maybe come in handy. Although I'll likely have to play it out. Opponent passes, Thoughtseize, also very helpful. So I can play Henge and still Thoughtseize. Alternatively, I can put Obosh in hand. But we'll try this. Opponent takes six. Okay, opponent's got the Grease Fang and the Parhelion. Definitely don't want to take Parhelion here. And then Sorin can get back a Grease Fang as well. So, given that there's already a Grease Fang in the graveyard, I think taking Sorin makes the most sense. And then strand them with a Grease Fang that doesn't have anything to get back. And uh, yeah, that's it. So we're hoping they don't find a discard outlet anytime soon. Although now with the double Gergroth, we can certainly block uh, Parhelion as well. So Shakedown Heavy attacks, and then most likely playing Gergroth. And I'll keep Fail Push available, also Black Man in case we draw another Thoughtseize or a Mystic. Alright, so... Yeah, opponent had a small window to get Parhelion in the graveyard, but they couldn't find a discard outlet in time. There's a Grizzly Salvage, which doesn't find any vehicles. Although they could grab Rafine's Informant to then discard Parhelion, but then it's going to be another turn before Grease Fang shows up. And that's probably too little too late. Now Thoughtseize can take Grease Fang. But uh, even with a land, we would be able to put a Bosch in play to double the damage from our 5-mana Gergroth, and that's game as well. Awesome. So, yeah, we got a couple games in against Amazon Greasefang. And yeah, we can definitely hold our own if we get a nice explosive start and get one of our Reach creatures in play, whether it's Titan of Industry or Elder Gergroth. But uh, turn 3, Parhelion can still be a little bit too fast for us to interact with. So pretty happy with how this fight rigging deck turned out. The fact that we have both Great Henge and fight rigging that we can set up early thanks to our many 3-drops means our deck has a lot more redundancy than just having a single card we need to draw every game. And then Obosh as companion also gives us a nice tool in the late game. And it's not like we have to give up much to include it since we want to play a 1-drop elf, some 1-mana interaction into a 3-drop into Henge and fight rigging anyways. So the only card I can think of I would maybe play in this list without Obosh is some Something like an Incubation Druid, which can benefit from the counter from Fight Rigging, as well as maybe a Great Henge, and can help us ramp. But uh, otherwise, I think I'm quite happy with the main deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.